So much of what you do during the day depends upon how you went to sleep the night before. And there are so many ahadith that talk about the angel's involvement in your going to sleep and the effect that that's going to have on the next morning. You're going to sleep and you have a few choices to make. Number one, you're really tired. So am I really going to recite all of the athkar, all of the remembrances that the Prophet Wasallam recommended that I recite at this time, or should I just leave this to later? Um, do I really get up and do wudu right now, as is the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam? Do I go to sleep in that state of purity? I'm having a hard time going to sleep, so should I pull my phone out and start looking through my social media, I send a few text messages, watch a few videos. There's so much that you can do in those last moments before you sleep. And the Prophet Wasallam said that every night as you go to your bed, an angel and a devil come to you and they start to prompt you. When you're going to sleep at night, the Prophet Wasallam said in those moments, an angel comes to you and says, ikhtim bi khair, ikhtim bi khair, ikhtim bi khair. End your night well, end your night well, end your night well. And then a devil comes and says, end your night in evil, end your night in evil, end your night in evil. End it with a bad word, end it with a bad sight, end it with a bad exchange, end it with something evil because our actions are judged by their endings. Okay, right? So this is your last moment of the night and you're going into death, right? Because at night when you sleep, it's al mawt al-sughra. It is your minor death. You don't know if you're waking up the next morning. Your souls go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just as you live your life and it's those last moments that count so much, such is also the case when you're going to sleep. So the angel says, ikhtim bi khair. End your night with dhikr. End your night with the remembrance of Allah. End your night with some Quran. End your night with those good things, not those things that are bad. And there are so many different things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that we should do at night and they do involve the angels. So one of them, the Prophet ﷺ said that when a person makes wudu, he said, purify your body so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may purify you at night. For when a person goes to sleep in a state of wudu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel that spends the entire night at your head. And that angel says, Allahumma khfir li abdika kama bata tahira. Oh Allah, forgive your servant as he went to sleep in a state of wudu. Oh Allah, forgive your servant as he went to sleep in a state of purification. And he keeps on making dua for your forgiveness throughout the entire night, just because you took those moments to make wudu, you took those moments to wash yourself and purify your body before you went to sleep. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned Ayat al-Kursi. To recite Ayat al-Kursi, the Prophet ﷺ said that it would stand guard for you, that Allah would send an angel that would stand guard for you and protect you from any shaitan that could come anywhere near you throughout the night. And so just by making wudu, just by reciting Ayatul Kursi, by reciting those things, you have an angel that stands guard for you. You have an angel that seeks forgiveness for you throughout the night. You end your night well. So if you die that night on dhikr, then you return to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in a state of remembrance, as opposed to in a state of whatever it is that you were doing before you went to sleep. And if you wake up in the morning, you wake up already oriented towards Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, ready to cling back to those things that you went to sleep with so that you can continue your direction and your pursuit of Him.